Diagwith Akara. Welcome friends. This is Siobhan. I go by the Celtic Empath. I'm based in Ireland and my website is activateawakeaurahypnosis.com. All of my info, anything else that you might need to know to contact me or to find out a little bit more about me, it's all below in the description. So welcome and delighted that you have found your way to this particular video today. Welcome back anybody of my returning uh, subscribers and welcome to any new subscribers that have found my channel and have decided to try me out. I'm really happy that you're here and it's all part of um, helping to get out alternative information, alternative news, alternative opinions that are being greatly censored now. So and um, today's what I want to talk about today has been something that has been quite censored and quite strangled for a long, long time. So I don't know with uh, YouTube's algorithm how far this video is going to go, but let's give it a, a try. So today I'm going to briefly introduce a topic of which there is actually a wealth of material, um, historical material that can be looked into. But I'm going to try and keep it as clear and as concise as I possibly can. It's about a topic of which I am going to be talking more and more to as my work continues to unfold in the coming weeks and the coming months and as my own sharing process is continuing for me. Finding the format that works for us is important. This particular subject is of a great personal interest to me. It's a subject of which I have made um, general a lot of general references to in many of my previous videos without going into any detail. But today I'm starting with my first formal documenting of what is called Ireland's true history. So please don't be put off and think that, oh, this is just only pertaining to Ireland, only relevant to Ireland. You're going to be fascinated to find out about Ireland's true history and the impact of what it actually means for the world's true history. So this is a subject which is greatly unknown. It's untaught about within schools and educational places. Um, this information and knowledge has been locked away literally for centuries. And the depth of the knowledge is, is locked away under lock and key. But a certain amount of it has managed to make its way into certain journals and historians, true true historians and my personal belief that have been looking for digging deep into the history and behind the stories of history that we've been told. But it is of my personal belief, my long time knowing history, history as we've been shown of it or been told is only quite fabricated and one-sided and is become quite a stupefying account of history which has really kept all of us not just Ireland and Irish people um, but also the rest of the world really keeping us in kind of an intellectual bias a historical bias an extremely narrow and, and very ignorant understanding of ourselves most importantly our ancestors but ourselves, who we are, where we've come from. And when I say ancestors, I'm talking back way, way hundreds of years. I'm going back into the BCs, into the very early beginning times, the earliest records that are known to us uh, for history. So I'm talking indeed right back to our very origins. Our origins. So let me begin this video by saying to you that much Irish history has been hidden and obscured in order to sell us what I call now a real mem style ideology of the Irish, the Irish people in general. What do you think of when you think of Irish people? Unfortunately, we think of Jack the Lads, we think of the drunken Irish, we think of the fighting Irish, we think of... St. Patrick, we think of funny Irish people having the crack. Um, but gosh, what would you think if I told you 
that there's many ancient root races have been traced back and are traced back to the ancient land of Ireland, to this particular land. Have you heard or have you been informed of the significant Irish Egyptian genetic connections? And do you know that hundreds of ancient artifacts found all over the world, including South America, the mainland of the USA, and Northern Africa, and many other European countries, are all traced back to ancient Irish Celtic Egyptian artifacts with Celtic um, signatures and Celtic artifacts, Celtic um, artwork and symbols on these artifacts, tracing the gold back to Ireland and further back to Egyptian sources. And so it is with that introduction that I want to now segue basically into introducing you to a very important and unknown historical figure, a female historical figure called Queen Scotia, Queen, Sco Queen Scotha, Queen Scotia, um, Princess Scotha or Princess Mary Tatton. I guess she wasn't officially given a queen name because she was an exiled queen who exiled with her husband, um, who was also considered a king. He was a Milesian king and they're um, of Scythian, Scythian um, roots and they were exiled basically from North Africa, Egypt and they exiled to Ireland together, King Menes, who was of Greek origin. And so Queen, I, I'm, I will refer to her as Queen even though officially she is considered Princess Merit Hatton or Princess the Shko, Skotha. So there's a very famous grave gravesite in Ireland which is called Scota's Grave and it is reputed to be the burial site of this particular queen, Queen Scotha, who is a pharaonic queen. She's Egyptian and I have to say it's one of Ireland's best kept secrets. <laughs> um, but she's not alone because there is a number of other, um, a number of megalithic sites, uh, tomb sites, tombs and wedge tombs and passage tombs that were destroyed in Cromwellian times. You know, so Irish history, you know, we've have been under invasion, many, many invasions for <laughs> absolutely not just hundreds of years, but thousands of years. And which is why we actually have an official book called the Book of Invasions, the Lower Gavala. But um, it's this one such record of history where we have um, Queen Mary Tatton, Queen Scotha and her husband who make their way, one of many uh, pharaonic queens who are exiled and to Ireland. And it's reputed that they exile here to the land which was then referred to and called the Land of Destiny, one of its many names. And uh, this is the thing about Ireland. Ireland, the name that is given now is more of an obscured name. But in the times of Queen Scotha, uh, we were referred to as the land of destiny. So this is interesting because this also brings into question something very important, which is referred to as the stone of destiny. Any connection? There are reputed connections, lots of myths and lore stories about the Stone of Destiny um, which have gone back into myth and the Stone of Destiny now apparently is under um, the, oh not Westminster, it moved I think within it from Westminster or um, up to Scotland, I think the Scots wanted the stone back so I think the stone has gone, has it gone back to Scotland, I'm not too sure um, but it, I believe it was in Westminster um, but anyway, that's, I'm digressing, uh, that's, that's a different video for a different day, a stone of destiny. So let's come back to the land of destiny, Inish Fall, is its Gaelic term, also referred to as the land of sovereignty. This word sovereignty is really important, it's a word that keeps rising, um, and Queen Scotha is 
quite an emissary now, a female emissary, an emissary of sovereignty, an emissary for women, an emissary of light that is shining very brightly now through the land of Ireland. Um, so that's kind of going into more spiritual realms and more spiritual terms. Today I'm going to stick, try and stick more to the history and just bringing together historical information um, and some people may call it, consider it mythical information but either way um, it all comes together and people who are shamanic in nature or connected to shamanic uh, ways of working with energy, working with the land, working with ancestors will probably maybe resonate with this in a slightly different way but for the purpose of this particular video and this talk that will be up actually up on anchor podcast as well and probably um, eventually i'm going to host these podcasts on podbean but for the moment um you'll be able to get and the non-visual version just the talking version of this will be hosted on anchor so just to show you briefly where it is that I'm talking about, um, I'm just showing, displaying here a map of Ireland and just zooming in along. I'm just going to take you to the location of where Scotus Grave is in Ireland. So it is in what we call the southwest of Ireland, which has been now kind of rebranded or renamed the Wild Atlantic Way. So the parts of uh, Cork and Kerry coastline are now being referred to as the west of Ireland. Um, but this is what we call here locally the southwest. So we're in Kerry. Um, so we're just outside a town called Trilly. And um, these lines that you can see here are actually overlays of some ley line uh, lines that have also been placed here. So there's a number of ley lines here passing around these locations and one is particularly going through Trilly. But coming here to Scotus Grave, um, it's at the side of a particular mountain range. It's Her grave is nestled into this beautiful glenside area and do bring your boots and an umbrella and some water and uh, maybe even a towel because if you go there and there any kind of a wet rainy day you're guaranteed to get it to get a bit mucky and a bit wet so if you don't mind that it will be an enjoyable walk to visit the grave but this particular area is nestled beautifully into a glen and Scota is reputed to have died here so she came here she was involved in the battle with the Tua de Danon which are, of course, another mythical, magical race uh, associated with Ireland, who disappeared back into the mists of time, but greatly associated again with Kerry. And Kerry is of relevance. It's called the, the Kingdom of Kerry. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful county. The scenery is unforgettable. And the sense of magic absolute magic and mystery in Kerry is absolutely unmistakable and there's a lot of reasons mythologically of certain energies connected to the Tuatha Dé Danann, to the Fermorians, to the Firbolgs, to all the Irish myth and legends and now Queen Scotha also where she died in battle against um, the Tuatha Dé Danann. So it's a particularly magical, special area. And I have two previous videos. I'll leave the links below in the descriptions. But I have two previous videos that are also talking about the energetics, energy work um, around that particular area of Kerry as well. So again, if you're into energy work, shamanic work, if you're looking a bit deeper into making deeper connections into the land, um their videos you might be interested in and these are like a whole series of videos and talks eventually that I'm going to be talking more and more to about the energy of where this is going what's what's 
what it's all connecting into and and why it's actually relevant at the moment but to kind of bring our attention back i guess to the actual history so um Skota is the a descendant of Nefertiti and Akhenaton, the pharaoh Akhenaton and Nefertiti. So also here we're connected into the lineage um, of Isis. And going studying back along, I'm going to play a bit of a video for you. This is the a major historical work that was conducted by a man called Conor McDarry and I'm just going to play a clip of his audiobook his full book which is in audio version on YouTube and he just talks a bit here about Isis and the connection of Egypt the pharaohs and making certain connections back to Isis now this is only one segment there are a number of other um, accounts that are in references to Isis and in connection to of course the sun god sun worshipping to Jesus um, to the etymology which is really important here and this is what a lot of it comes down to is people um, experts who are able to interpret and understand the etymology of all of the different words so the etym etymological research and connections done here through various different languages that all tend to come back to one sort of root language which is old ancient irish um, irish gaelic or an ancient form of irish that would have been spoken to me back in the days of the Tuatadanan, the Malaysians um, around those areas and er eras and probably predating. So uh, we're talking about the language that would be as old as that. So there's an, in Ireland, the land is littered, literally littered and covered in all kinds of megalithic sites and dolmens passageways tombs um ring forts uh, you name it it's all over the country and a lot of it some of it was uh, destroyed as well the cromwellian area they went on a rampage trying to destroy uh, what they could and yet with that the landscape still remains with lots of of other beautiful sites that have uh, lasted as any particular individual king is concerned but all through the mythical story are preserved secretly allusions to facts which are contained in those names and required only knowledge of the interpretive key to be understood whatever there was of real and actual history of mankind chronicled up to the time of the destruction of the alexandrian libraries through the mad ambition of Rome to reduce the world to ignorance and to rule all mankind under her own church dominion, was destroyed. The other great libraries that remained were those in Ireland, which she destroyed at the time of the English invasion. At the time of the Spanish invasion of America, her priests destroyed all the literature which they could find. Any of it they spared, they altered to suit their purpose of deception. Wherever any writings could be found that would shed light on the past, they were seized and destroyed. It is only since the conquest of the Irish Church of Iessa that the staffs of priests were set to work by Rome to compose histories which would furnish a proper setting or background for her false pretensions. At the time of the conquest of the Irish Church in Papacy, she took over the Irish sacred writings and mythical lore, and our Bible is an eloquent witness to substantiate my statement. She has adopted them as her own and altered them to suit her claims. The evidence of the Irish occupation in Egypt is established by those great pyramids and other monuments and remains along the Nile Valley. This fact is amply borne out in secret in the mythical names given of temples and places and of Egypt's first ruler, 
we are told that the founder of the first colony in Egypt was Isis, and that she was worshipped there by her devotees and disciples. She is the ancient Irish goddess or mother of God, and the Irish introduced her worship there. At one time, her worship extended all over Europe. Mythically, she is the moon, and the night, the consort of the sun, and she is the ether, the primordial substance. Mythically, she is the queen of heaven and the mother of God, co-equal with the father. The name is formed from the Irish Isse Isis, I-S-E hyphen I-S-I-S, meaning she, herself, who with T, T-I, he, himself, constitutes the co-equal father, mother, God. The dynasty of the pharaohs is a mythical one, and is Irish lore preserved in the Bible. The name Pharaoh has a cryptic meaning and alludes to man's peculiar composition and tendencies. The Pharaohs are invented rulers or personages formulated to express the idea of a stage in the allegorical story of man's generation in the fleshly body, which is a prelude to his progressive advance into the spiritual body. The name is composed of two words made into one, but slightly changed so that it might not be so easily discovered by those for whom it was not intended, that is, all outside the ranks of the priesthood. It is derived from the Irish words far, F-E-A-R, meaning man, and row, R-A-O-D-H, meaning to ride, the sensual man. This is the leading sense meant to be conveyed by the term, and this idea is expressed in the myth in the incident of Pharaoh's wife becoming enamored of Joseph. Interesting folks. I wonder what you make of all of that. Is this information all new to you? Is this information that you've um, already perhaps uh, even heard of or read about? Um, is this completely different idea or, um, or slant to what you recognise, know or perceive about Irish history? I have to say that, just to sum this up, um, Irish culture has become a monoculture. It had had has had a very unique history and has been considerably and deliberately washed away almost completely erased thanks to globalism, the invasion of foreign ideologies, the real story of Ireland, and indeed of the world's history, the true world's history, is infinitely more fascinating than what we're led to believe it is. I would really encourage you to have a look at the Dublin Museum online and have a look at the Irish relics, the ones at least that have been found and there is a um, fantastic display of Irish torques. Over 70 of them were discovered in Tutankhamun's tomb, among other sites in America. And of course, these are like not very officially reported, especially the find in Tutankhamun's tomb. And um, this is all kept very quiet, but it's there if you dig for it, if you dig for the information. Ireland, to sum up, has a fascinating history. In fact, you might say that Ireland is the root of everything. And as I've something that I've been saying and feeling for a long time in the past couple of years, when I've emerged and begun this journey myself of looking into the true history, I always had this long time knowing the sense of that everything comes back to Ireland. This constant reminder, this thought in my mind that it all comes back to Ireland. And as I'm discovering, even historically, through various different texts and, and different historians and researchers that are kept back, not brought forward in the mainstream, into um, mainstream education mainly, that Ireland is was considered the origins of masonry. And whatever it is that we feel and think about masonry, it was not what it is today. It's completely different. It was taken over, it was hijacked, it was inverted, and it's been turned into something completely different. It's been used. 
um, masonry is also closely connected with the origins of what was true Druidism and Druidism practices, which of course originate in Ireland. So we're a long way away now from what true Druidism and Masonic um, energy used to be and what the, the goodness of it was, the purity of it. We have many ties that I'm not going to cover today, but this history is fascinating. We're, it's connected into the history of Atlantis. We go further, Celtic European countries, um, the Celtic races and pre-dating races prior to the Celts are traced back to Ireland. And from Ireland, everything spans out. Not only is it found in relics and artifacts, in, um, in artworks, in various different cultures, it's coming through in the language. And the Irish Gaelic language, the ancient language, is considered to be the root language of all languages. And it is truly indeed a very beautiful language spoken. Of course, the version of Irish that we have today, again, has been changed. It's not the same of what they spoke, um, the dialects, and even how it was written is slightly different from the original language itself. This is all coming back to us, everybody. It's coming back in our DNA. It's coming back in people who are second, third, fourth generation um, Irish ancestors who would have come from the land of Ireland and the, with the history of so much migra Im immigration here, there is much DNA spread all over the world and it's a very important reason spiritually why this DNA what went to the four corners of the world and why we... Um, mated basically with many other races and species to get that Celtic blood um, to preserve it um, and now it's coming back. And that is another topic so to, I must speak to about the activation of the Celtic DNA. That would be another video for me that I will be doing on this channel. Um, so just to sum it all up, it all comes back to Ireland. Um, we have this interesting connection to the origins of Isis, to Jesus, to the solar deities and sun worship. Um, so if you enjoyed, hopefully that if you managed to stay listening so far all the way to the end, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Appreciate all the appreciation for the work and for your support and for for everything else um please feel free to share this work my next video is going to be about scotha i'm going to be going a bit more in depth about scotha my own personal um connections and energy work with scotha and what scotha actually represents now for the irish people and what's emerging within the work so my next video will be based a bit more around energy work It'll be about channeled energy, some shamanic work that um, is coming forward now in the land. So if you're interested, um, stay tuned and like and subscribe and do all that business because it does help on YouTube. Despite all this censoring that goes on and they do censor quite a bit around this type of material. So that is it. Buikas um, Lydia and sure we shall meet again.